One sec, recording? Oh. Cool. Or right, recording. You said the release was the easy part? Yep. That was nice and easy this week. Yeah. I had some minor issues with the servers that Petru pointed out, so I just uh, had to stop them all yesterday. That was a bit unpleasant, but it's fixed now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll be good really fix. good. Yeah. Cool. All yeah, good now, though. Yeah, thanks for handling that. Cool. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll jump in. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, first things first. Uh, thank you, Gordon, for the awesome work on the latest release for Infinity. And so, as we mentioned, um, I know Pietro's been hounding us about this, rightfully so. We have been aiming to get more on a consistent release schedule. And so, it's been about two weeks and we have a new release out. So, we're aiming to get more on that consistent routine. So, Pietro's always thanks for the, the nudge there. Let me pin this chat on my screen. So the release is out and kind of on a high level real quick, I uh, wanted to call out a few things that are in it. Um, Aaron Frank put together an awesome PR about fixing the inspector add input button, improving tweening, adding print in chat, fixing entry signals and export VARs. So a lot of cool stuff here. Uh, be sure to take a look at this. Uh, these have been some pretty highly requested features. Uh, for example, tweening, which is in an upcoming tutorial video, we were just doing it in visual scripting and now it's available in GD script. So we'll be adding this into a future tutorial video, along with some additional options for tweening. Also a helper method for printing in chat. So if you recall, you can print via a notification. You can uh, do that visual scripting or, well, so far visual scripting, but now GD script, uh, friendly names in GD script. Also um, more on the inspector add input button. And so we'll cover this in a future tutorial video as well. And so it'll help on the signal side, along with an additional helper method for set inspector parameter input value. So cool stuff there. And then another commit on fixing the entry signal creation dialog. Uh, so this is super cool. So because there's some confusion here, we're talking about this internally where we're like, wait a sec. So space variables, that's the variables button that you'll see. And that's the, you know, we need to rework the UI of the space variables. But um, if it's there, you'll, if you pop that up, you'll be able to see all the variables of the space, both for objects, globals, things like that. And then we had a GD script and we're like, wait a sec, this is actually kind of similar to the at export that we have for GD script. So we're just doing exactly that. So now if you had at export, that'll behind the scenes actually create a space variable and then you can update it that way and read it that way. Um, you do, one thing to note that's very important, this will be in a tutorial video as well, is you do need to actually call that space variable dot um, emit and essentially kind of like, uh, hey, we've set the variables, now actually run that because if you just do the setter, that doesn't work uh, for performance reasons. We may change that in the future, but just to start, don't forget to call that dot emit. So that'll be super cool. Um, if you're on the GD script side, as a big fan there, then uh, this will be very nice that you're used to coming from Godot. And looks like we might have a bug already on 20 model scale. We'll be happy to take a look at that. And Pietro said it'd be nice to be able to use signals from add entry as global signals. Cool, yeah, noted, good, good to think about. Yep, yep, definitely agree. Cool, good stuff. So we got that PR in. Um, one other change that we've mentioned in the past is the default public build permissions. You'll see this in the code. The original intent was like from the second life days where you could just kind of go into anyone's land if it was permissioned and see what they're building. And that was, we, we've changed that a bit. So now things are private by default. Uh, so it was kind of confusing. I think it didn't really match the paradigm of more of the Roblox type model that we're working with. So now when you create a space by default, that will be in fact private. But we do encourage you to set it to public observer, for example, so you can invite anyone in to check out what you're building and come hang out. Also update engine. So I uh, got some details here for those who are in on the engine side. So Godot is getting more stable, which is music to my ears. So that's very good to see. And so we'll, we don't, just as a recap, we don't take in every upgrade. It's more kind of staggered sequenced for when we do, just because we want to make sure that the changes are stable. But a lot of times there'll be changes we need and then that's when we upgrade. So thanks Gordon and Aaron for hopping in there. And then also Android support. So this is in draft. Um, 
Gordon is working away on this. Uh, so we're targeting the Meta Quest 2 and 3 for better Android support. So that is incoming in the future too. Uh, definitely still in draft. Got a lot of optimizations here, but especially for those coming from the VR chat world, got a lot of fun stuff in the works here. Um, I think you'll notice some similarities as you get more into VR. We want to make sure that that is a great experience because that is something that we are supporting. Yeah, on the Mirror repo, it's draft. On the actual engine side, the code is already ported for the physics engine and merged. Uh, it's just half of the work is essentially done. Um, yeah, just adding a note. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. So that's the high-level stuff real quick on the open source repo side. And um, so, of course, these aren't as major of changes as was like with the Horizon release, but... That's intentional. We want to keep like kind of more small iterative releases instead of massive pushes because that's how bugs get introduced. And then you know, it's kind of like you got to keep the CSV pipelines clean by keep on running stuff. So to keep on releasing. So this is a good routine that we want to keep on aiming for. And then we want to make you happy by shipping functionality quite re regularly. So more incoming there. Hopping over to the chat. Uh, Pietru mentioned yeah, custom signals. We'll take a look at that. Uh, isn't clear to run functions on space objects if you know it has a function. Ooh, that's good to look at. That's a good point. Also editing map. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, you should be able to do that. You'll just need to actually check the space object.gd file. I think you raised a good point, though. All of our API needs to be put in the docs, like our space object API mm -hmm. uh, for the scripting. So maybe we need to do like some kind of parse of space object the space object class at least and just dump that to the wiki or something and add some annotations for what every function is for and for a player too um because a lot of our public methods are actually very well isolated versus our private ones um yeah i think we should consider adding it but we'll need to talk about that privately and work out what we can actually expose yep makes sense um, labels 3D. I thought we might have that exposed, or am I incorrect there? We have that screen that we use for that demo that we have. Um, and that might be usable for their purposes, but we, we, could, we would need to expose it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got you. Um, I'm not, I don't think we have 3D labels. I, mean, I might be wrong about that, but I need to double check. Yeah, that'll definitely be important to have at some point. Um, that reminds me of the Second Life days again. <laughs> it had the label 3D essentially, and yeah, it's used all the time. Really helpful. Yeah, great suggestions for sure. And Gordon, any thoughts on the, um, going up above in the chat a bit, the custom signal side? Uh, actually, no, we'd need to ask um, Aaron about that, but um what signals specifically would you like to be global um like can you give me an example of how you would use it please so like by item is your signal name okay Yeah, so you want a buy item signal. So if I press E on a box and you call buy item, then the signal is emitted. And then you can read it in another place. That's a good idea. Okay. Now let me think about that. We'll need to pass that to Aaron as well to ask about it, if that's okay. So we should take it. If it's okay with you, we'll take a screenshot of this and send it to Aaron to ask him. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I thought we had a way to do this. We good. probably do. It's probably just a little bit obscure. I need stocks. Yeah, we, <laughs> we do need better documentation. <laughs> it's that, that bad. Our API is so big. I'm like, yeah, we need our own docs. <laughs> we do. We do. Yeah, because we have the visual scripting generated, auto generated docs working well. That'd be good to do for the GD script API as well, which would be massive once again. But if we auto generate it based off existing stuff, it shouldn't be too bad if we find the right way to do it. Yeah. There's actually a few tools, I believe, for that, if I recall correctly. One of the 
things that you mentioned in the past. I think there's a swagger generator or something. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, I might be wrong about that. I need to double check, but I think there might be. We use swagger for the Nest.js side. Would that work for yeah. GDScript? Um, I think I saw some weird plugin for it. One sec. Okay. Yeah, you're taking a look. Yeah, there's a thing called GDScript Docs Maker. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's not using Swagger. No, it's just a GDScript doc maker. My bad. Oh, all good. Well, and ideally, it'd just be the same type, whatever uh, script or framework that is on the current visual scripting side, so it just stays consistent. That'd be good. Yeah. This just generates markdown, so we can probably just eat it into the docs. Sweet. Sounds good. Pietro's Tycoon. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for the link. That's helpful. We can take a look at it that way. That's really cool. I liked your other map, Obby, as well. Because I am bad at those games. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm excited for the Tycoon. This is my favorite. This, uh, the server names is because you are joining the correct game. This is because when we create a play server, it's given a random name. So maybe we should just be calling them the name of your space dash one dash two dash three or something yeah. or just showing you the original space name. That definitely needs something though because it is a bit jarring. Yeah, I'll create an issue for this real quick. It's really easy to fix as well. It's not. It's not difficult. Carol can do that. Well, it's on the Godot side, right? Um. Oh, oh, I see so. Yeah, on the Godot side, if I don't name it, the back end names it. So if the back end just names it better, it'll be fine. Yeah, we could still show the server name as subtext, but it shouldn't be the header text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. It's also really useful for like finding that server if... Well, actually, no, it's not. You should maybe have some more... Some ID or something for the play server ID. Maybe not like there, but hidden at the bottom of it in gray or something. Mm -hmm. Just so that, you know, if someone's having a problem, I can look at the specific instance or something. But that's for later. My brain is just thinking, like, drab purple cheetah, even though it's in the DB, doesn't identify where it runs. I guess that won't be a problem when we, um, when we're peer to peer. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I'm here. So um, most of the, that stuff uh, came when I, you know, started, you know, making stuff. You know. Also, uh, I tried making, you know, a custom map for the obby, but I needed to go for the flat terrain because almost every time I tried to upload custom texture for the terrain, uh, the custom height map, uh, it just went and crashed. So. Oh, that should be fixed. 100%. Uh, also. Also, when I uh, join my game, I mean the development environment, uh, sometimes I just am like levitating and I can't move. Like it, it is almost like if empty map was not having collision. And also, when I'm uh, changing model scale, I'm getting ghost collisions. Like the stuff that is not uh, like it's, it's colliding, but it's there is no object there that should collide. Even if like uh, all this objects are like one 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 collision. Okay, so the initial terrain issue, the initial issue with the terrain is just the terrain's shape not being loaded correctly. That needs looked at. Um, yeah, uh, as, I, as I said, you, you can just go use admin access and check out uh, for for the stuff I said was problem problematic in the icon uh, space. Uh, at the moment, you know, I, I'm missing the uh, ability to display text in three dimensions, like you know, label 3D to say like what is the price of the object uh, at the moment it is made like uh, when you go to the button it, the button will tell you how much it costs but it mm -hmm. will uh, automatically buy stuff if it if it basically you know if you had enough money so you know so you need that fixed so that you can put something over the box like if you're buying yeah. a gun or something yeah i mean you, you know uh, i uh, like sent the code that i uh, used right 
the notify, uh, for example, the new you, you notify and no uh, notify info warn etc. and like mirror without sending chat. Uh, I use that you know for debug multiple times. Wait, uh, I'm gonna quickly find the file because I have it in one uh, folder. Thank you. Okay, it's really uh, helpful. Thank you so much for your yeah. help. But basically, this is you know full full. It is like full black. Why why the hell do I have blue pixel though there? Okay, why the hell do I have blue, blue pixel, blue dot? Okay, I don't get it, but uh, whatever. Yeah, so uh, also there is problem with uh, snap at times. I input five mm -hmm. and I get 5.1. Ah. Uh -huh. Is yeah, it rounding? Uh, That's weird. It's not rounding, but basically when I input, uh, if I try to like, uh, if I try to remove the number one, it will automatically like make sure it is not zero or something like that, or like m make sure mm -hmm. that there is other than zero in there. So I, I need sounds... to first input five and then delete. So I, I had this problem. Delete. I had this also... problem when I worked on the scoreboard. It's because it's updating the value of the value that you set for the first time. So like when you changed it to five, the value is getting sent. And then you're putting another modification in, and what's happening is it's uh, getting it's it's writing them in the wrong order, and then oh, putting the uh, incorrect also, value. Um, yeah, I need to. So we have the health display, right? It would be nice to have something something like health display, but be able to like specify do I want it like in top corner, like top right, top left. Maybe I want it like top middle. Uh, so I could use it for something something like bank display, like how much person has cash. Yep, yep. I see. Because I don't, uh, because I, I, I'm, uh, I did, could, couldn't find API to make it like set score for a person, like how many, uh, I could use like a uh, number of kills, deaths, or their score for that, but it also didn't fully work. So, uh, also, uh, if I uh, make new map and then uh, assign height map but later I click the button to unassign it like reset to default val value that is null uh, it won't save it uh, and next time I enter it will load the last uh, last height map sorry I'm right also it, uh, also it would be nice if you could like upload some kind of default height map that is just flat terrain because uh, I wasn't able to find anything that would be just fl flat, or like flat, uh, flat in uh, like almost all map, but the borders are like super high. So basically, like it makes like mountains on the sides. Mm. So like a so default flat like map with uh, trapped borders. Yeah. Um, would basically. you want it to, like, would you want the floor to be like gray, like just generic, like a. Uh... Uh, I mean, mod. as far as I can see, I can uh, I, I can select it using flat material and cliff material. Yes. So, but basically, you just make like I don't know a height map that is like you know border around the map, like it, it like goes up and makes mountain, and then we, with flat material material and cliff material material people can go and define whatever they like. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, there could be just a default flat map that is just flat. Like, I mean, I know that is no value, but uh, as I said, uh, it uh, automatically like reassigns last non-null value. Also, uh, undo, uh, uh, undo, undo, uh, control Z does not always work. Basically, it said that there is nothing left to undo uh, in this stack. Even if I just added like a tree, uh, like or like multiple trees, it might say sometimes that there is no, uh, nothing left in a stack to undo. And also, one last thing, uh, it is annoying when I duplicate object and it, uh, and it automatically goes up because, for, uh, for example, let's say I, I want to populate map with trees. Uh, and I, you know, the, for example, in Godot, you can use uh, Proton Scatter, right? Or uh, any other plugin. But here you, you have to go, you know, like uh, hand by hand and, and like you, you make a group of trees then you copy it, then you move it down those like uh, X amount of points down the, to make sure it is uh, again touching ground and then you can move it left and right. So you, you can take it, it would be nice to have something that could help us populate maps 
we have dummy objects like trees that are just meant for decoration and we don't need to like actually uh, have them as space objects mm -hmm. like they'll be available or, or or there can be like a check a checkbox do you want those objects to be like uh, interactable or, or be instance of like uh, set space objects because somebody might want to make a tree cutting for example or uh, or mining and etc So that uh, and well, the, also I'm waiting for the groups, but uh, grouping is something that I can wait for. It it, it just makes uh, stuff a bit more uh, like inconvenient for stuff. Like uh, I, I can't just go duplicate du dupli, uh, du duplicate the full tycoon. I, I need to go and change names in each tycoon because if I, there there are groups. I could just uh, like go get all uh, space objects in this group, or like this is my object group. Group get this, uh, get get the door that is in this group, or something like that. But for now, the tycoon is just uh, you go enter. You can uh, the maximum of two players for now. Uh, you can go climb your door, and then you can go uh, build uh, stuff for free because there is no, no like dropper yet, but. I might be. Uh, I might add it on uh, later, uh, uh, like I don't know, maybe tomorrow or other day when I have time to make the script for it. So that's that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your help. Yeah, this is super. I've helpful. written up all the stuff in the chat, um, and I'll we'll get it translated into issues once we talk about which each one. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, thank you tons. This is awesome. Super helpful. All right. Yeah, and uh, just to reiterate a few. Yeah, so we'll, we got these noted here. Um, anytime there's a bug, it's always super helpful if there are reproduce steps. Uh, I know some of them are very apparent, but yeah, for some of the more complicated ones, it's always helpful. Cool. Good stuff. Well, that covers quite a bit. Anything else we should touch on? Okay, so one minor thing. Uh, on Visual Studio, uh, there's a bug uh, where if you're compiling the engine that we're using, it will not compile due to Visual Studio updating the compiler. I have fixed this already, and the fix is building. So if you're building on Windows, uh, please pull the latest uh, and uh, just compile again. It should work. Um, there was some incompatibility introduced by Visual Studio with a warning that appeared uh after the fact so we didn't change anything it was just the case that visual studio changed from underneath us so that's now fixed um if you have any issues just ping me um i did uh also look at updating jolt just to solve the problem because they'd fixed the upstream but updating jolt is not trivial um so we're on the version we're on and it won't be changing for quite a while <laughs> that's it um yeah, the VR porting is going well. It's just, you know, engine issues are getting in my way. Uh, unit testing from gut with the new engine is broken. Um, so the mirror client, game client, is actually not being unit tested right now uh, until gut can fix the issue that they have with their library. I've reported it to them and I've put an issue in our issue tracker. Um, so that should get fixed in the next week or so. I'm not really worried about that. For the meantime, I've disabled the test so we can still deploy the app. Um, and that's it from my side. Just looking forward to the next features. Sweet. And we've been discussing the architecture a bit as well to try and make things a little easier. And we're going to break up the architecture improvements into smaller chunks. Um, it sounds boring and unimportant, but it's really important because it's going to make adding the features that Pietro requested even easier. Um, yeah, that's it. Yep, small releases, small features are good. Keep things stable. As if you were typing, so I'll wait for those. It's like that. Um, that book, The Zen of, I forget what the exact title is, Motorcycle Maintenance. 
you actually need to zen in the art of motorcycle maintenance yep, yep yeah you actually need to keep a motorcycle clean by running it i was like ah that is like cicd and releases yeah. keep the pipes clean <laughs> yeah you do and bit rots without it carburetor gets plugged up because the fuel turns into um into varnish mm -hmm. Pietro, I see the Aaron's PR you mentioned. Um, is there a different one you have in mind? Because we did merge the 184 you were commenting on. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's in there. It's in there, yeah. Yeah, we're releasing every two weeks, so that's not good. Uh, GD Magia. Notify.info. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's automatically hyperlinked, but that's something we could look into in the future. I think that's a security feature so that we can't spam people with links. True. It has to be in the app for that reason. We eventually but want we to get... We could... Uh... Oh, good. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, no, you you can do it. The <laughs> in-world Chrome is what we love. And then we could just click the link and boom, pops up right there and you don't have to leave the app and it's sandboxed. Yeah, we'll have to sandbox it. Um, but you're right, this wouldn't be perfect. It is a security issue, so that's why I'm kind of like, mm, we'll have to think about it and carefully implement anything with it. I think I think when I did the notifications, I made it so that only white, only the URLs we've chosen can be allowed deliberately because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of apps taking people out of the app to try and do certain things. Um, I think it's fine if we had a single page uh where we could put a disclaimer at the bottom saying these links are third party because we need to put some kind of barrier between third party links and being able to click them if we had something on the back end to say hey you're now leaving the mirrors mm -hmm. known ecosystem by clicking this link blah 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 that would be fine you could leave yeah. it unfiltered then well gd magia what is um, the use case you're thinking of And part of the intent for the space page, like Pietro's Tycoon, and so we can always add more stuff here because we want you to be able to like have this be your games page. And this is definitely, you know, kind of V1. So there's more to come here to make, customize it more and add cool stuff. That's a good point, actually. Putting the creator like information in their, their website URL definitely would be cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, we do have that. If you go to your profile, you can link Looks like it's not here. I think on mine I have it. I uh, link to Twitter and yeah, there's my Twitter, for example. Oh, cool. Uh, GD Magia said monitor in world loading a web view. Yeah, that's the intent. Uh, Second Life did that, which was pretty sweet. Um, and that was possible because it was actually, I actually think they had an in world browser. I don't, yeah. The, it takes more to do correctly. Yeah, they, they embedded Chrome. Gary's mod did the same. Uh, mm -hmm. We had like a thing called PlayX, and it was just Chrome browser embedded in the app. It's yeah. really cool. It's, it's more straightforward, too, if we just directly allow like video to start, because then we know exactly what's being loaded instead of like a full web page. Section for spaces that you recommend in the future, yeah. Um, it's definitely something we'd like on the creator side. We need some more games, though. So that is one thing we're focusing on first, is getting a lot of these features that you've mentioned across the board, because then there's more games to recommend, since there's more features. But I do like that idea. Like if you, okay, list to play, if you click add to list button, you get a list of what you want to play. Yeah, context would be helpful there. I think they mean like favorites. Are you talking about? Oh, like a play page. 
Oh, like a playlist. Yeah, because you can essentially do that right now. Like when you open a, once you publish this, this play button here will deep link into the app. I think he means like just a collection of games. Gotcha. Like a page with just a, just like play game. Maybe we should just have a checkbox for only games or something. Only show published games or something. It should be simpler than only show published games, but that's what it should do. Just a checkbox in the space list. Yeah, let me refresh. Oh, cool. Let's see. It did say play, but that's not there. Let me hard refresh. It was there. I saw it. <laughs> it disappeared. Yeah. That could be a bug. I bet it's a cache bug. No? Oh, we'll take a look at that. Okay. Oh. I'm adding it to the list. Yeah, cool. Uh, Let me check incognito. Oh. Hmm. So when I'm incognito, it shows. All right. Interesting. That's weird. <laughs> I can, yeah, we can add that to the web dev side. Uh, match replays. Yeah, we do have a lot to do on matches as well. Um, not, not tons, but like we do need to polish that. So uh, one of those is something we will have in mind. Um, match replays should be possible down the line uh, with the NetSync library. Uh, in theory, it's just a case of recording like all of the... Like recording second by second the space. But it would have to be explicitly enabled... Um, I don't think it's recording. Be good for any cheat though. It's just redoing the match, right? Oh, oh, you're talking about. Well, like, if you redo the, the match, yeah. So, like, if you wanted to watch the replay, you wouldn't need more than one second intervals. It would, mm -hmm. it would probably be fine. Well, maybe you would need like one tenth of a second, but you wouldn't need more than that. Because yeah. right now we store like every single change, every byte, and it would be probably quite large over five yeah. ten minutes yeah definitely when we get more to polished games um i do like that idea so you can get more serious um yeah, yeah. Like watch your matches and stuff like that get when we get a competitive fps in there that'll be fun cool good thoughts good stuff well thanks everyone really appreciate all these thoughts and thanks for flagging a lot of these features and bugs to our attention we'll be sure to we, we got our work cut out um, and as always, yeah, if you can um, file anything for how to reproduce it, that's always helpful and so we can tackle it more quickly. Um, I had a quick one, Jared. Uh, yeah. Do you want to show the, uh, you know, the thing in the assets channel yet? Or you want to keep that private for a bit? Um, I'll post it later. Okay, cool. Just checking. All right, thanks. Cool. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a great Thursday. Cool. You too. See you.